Okay, so here's the tail end of another project. Um, the throttle linkage has a surprisingly number of parts. And um, so I want to clean mine up. Mine was uh, locked maintenance for the last 10 years. It was very dry. The ball joints were dry. Really didn't find any damage, which is good. Um, but just want to discuss it because there's not much on the internet as usual. Um, so you remove it by taking out that clip and you remove the two bolts by the carbs and then you undo that nut and then the throttle linkage will come out. I removed my carburetors so the whole thing came out together just you know all together but uh, I also removed this section here from the carbs and um, you know I don't have plating and cadmium and zinc coat plating and all that stuff I just a do-it-yourselfer channel so this is a wire brush and um, paint situation paint whatever you want um, I'm not painting much and um, but anyways uh, I took everything apart um, what I left together and did not touch because I'm only p painting is um, I left these two ball joints on this piece I left the stop right here on this piece. I left this ball, uh, ball joint on this piece. And I left this part of the control rod here. I did not loosen that nut and remove this. Not for any reason, other than I didn't think I need to remove it to clean it up and paint it and less to mess with. Um, and then, um, painting i painted the spring couplers black um i painted the spring black and the washer black everything else i just put some clear coat on um taking apart um i am i did not clean up the lock nut and the and the nylon nut and the lock washer I'm going to put new on. Um, this bolt here actually has a fiber washer that broke on me. It was still intact though. I found one that's really close. Um, I'm sure it's a metric to English thing, but it's pretty, pretty close, a little bit loose. So a new one of those, new ones of these. The only thing that was worn out is this washer. I'm not sure if all TRs have this spring. It might be just the later ones, but this washer clearly showed signs of rubbing and it's a little uh, it's a little oblong i don't have a thick washer to replace it so i'm putting it back on for now but um it's not as round as it should be um pretty simple though um everything else cleaned up good um this is like an unattainium attainium bushing thing so you want to take good care of that that goes in here this nice piece here, probably brass, I don't know, maybe bronze. Um, I guess it goes on there and that goes goes in this in this hole here. Uh, the only thing that was surprising that I didn't see because I had so much grime on mine is this locking tab washer, which is also on a tanium. It's got a square hole. I I cracked I beat mine up and cracked it. I didn't realize so only one tab was bent up. I didn't know what the heck it was for. Um, so when you're removing this nut, make sure you bend that tab down first. Don't do what I did, then remove it. Um, I am going to, when I put it back together, I'm, um, I'm going to reuse it, but I don't trust it. It is a safety issue. So I'm going to put a little, a little bit of thread lock on these threads here. When I put the nut back on, just as a little extra protection and, um, about it. I'll start putting her back. Two together. adjustments you have to do right in the data section here. Um, one is um, this gap here. What you want to do is um, I measured, I put the bottom one on 6.5 twists and I, and I tightened the lock nut. And uh, that was my starting point. And my gap, my gap 
um, before I cleaned everything up was 945, and that was inside nut to inside nut. That's That was my starting point. The factory needs 3.18 long to long. And I'll show you that in a second. So what you want to do is you want to take a marker and just put a little dot. These are pointing 90 degrees off set from each other, by the way. So one end up, one end 90 degrees to the left. This is the bottom end. I put this on six and a half twists. I'm going to mark the center of the widest spot right there. Mark the center of the widest spot right there. Set your gauge to 3.18. And basically, you're going to end up you know, when you're done, right at 3.18. And then when I go back and I check this inside dimension right here, it matched what I had when I took it off, which was 0.9445. And it um, actually fits pretty good. Right now it's measuring 0.949, so I'm, I'm right there. Uh, it's real tricky adjusting these things because there's nothing to grab onto here. So what I used was a pair of pliers with these Amazon plastic cover things. You put over your, you put, you put, um, over your pliers like that. I um, grabbed onto it like this, the flat, because of the flat spot. And I held it tight and then I used the, the wrench to, to snug it. If you can't move this, you, you know you got tight tight enough. It's really as simple as that. Cleaning all these little holes out worked best with just a wooden toothpick, by the way. This piece here, you set it down like this so that this piece is pointing straight down, okay? And the factory measurement is 11.94, so you're basically 12 inches. And I got this old kid's ruler to, for my kids. Um, again, I marked right there in the middle of the wide part. And um, you want these to be opposite. If you look here, this is going into your throttle. And then this is going opposite straight into your linkage. And when I took it off, my starting point was this was 11.5 twists. So I put it on 11.5 twists and that was my starting point. And then um, you can see, you go to the center of this to your blue dot. And you want the basically the 12 inch line to be at the blue dot. And you adjust this so that you're right there happy with where it's at put a blue dot on the on the ball joint holder and one on the rod so you can keep your bearings of where you want this thing uh because it's going to get skewed when you're trying to tighten right. this up this is how i did it i put it in the vise at the nut right down here um point it so you can see your turn it so you can see the blue dots and then once again i held on to it like this and then I wrenched it um, with this. And then I made sure those dots stayed lined up. Then I went back and checked my measurement. And um, that's it. Start putting the uh, bracket back together. Um, all these moving parts and stuff, you're gonna just use chassis grease. I'm using my, um, my Redline Synthetic CB2, uh, which I used on my steering rack video. Um, but you're welcome to use it on some of the other moving parts. Um, so position this bracket like this. So if the stop is up top, you're going to put that right there. You can see the, the wear mark for that washer right there. Put that right there. And then put your washer here. Washer. And you need an analog nut. So 
now you can get your wrenches out and you can um, tighten it down if you couldn't find a torque on it obviously you're not going to super tighten it uh, because it's got a fiber washer but i'm sure you'll get a feel for it and it'll just be tight and move smoothly so just uh, tighten it gently i believe that's okay it's not loose flopping around but it's tight i tightened it so that just when the spring washer sat flat really as simple as that and um i'll try it out i can always loosen it up a little bit but i think it'll be okay Let's put this back together next um set this so uh, your ball joint is to the left and you're gonna stick this sucker in there and that's gonna go in there this thing's gonna flop around until the very, very end when you reinstall it on the car. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a 3 30 seconds drill shank and you're gonna stick it. Not hard to do, but you're gonna stick it in this gap right here. Make sure it's snug. Basically, you're gonna basically you're gonna end up centering this thing in the middle, and then you tighten down these bolts up here. Uh, but you don't do that right now. That goes on that. Then you and then this washer goes on. And your locking washer and this. And again, I'm gonna put a little Loctite on that. Want to go really easy for me. The non-bending tab was pointing opposite this nut, so in this direction. And then I just tightened it until a flat spot lined up with the original bend from the factory. And then I stopped, it was snug. And again, I put a little, uh, little Loctite on it too. Um, but it has a nice feel for it. And um, all I have to do here is just bend, bend that tab up. Kind of expected, but as soon as I bent it up, it snapped off. And here it is right here. Good news is it was a double tabbed one. So I tightened it a little bit more. It's still uh, loose and free. And I used a second tab that was not used by the factory. And that one, um, that bent up fine. All you're doing is getting it on a, on a, flat, on a flat spot for safety. And um, between that and the lock type, I think I'll be uh, in good shape. View of a 330 second stuck in there. It's a gap. That's the gap the factory wants. Put the couplers back together. Washers go on the head side. And they just uh, they slide into the ends. And when you tighten them, it squeezes this metal right here because this gap and it, onto the shaft. And uh, make sure the heads are pointing the same direction. And, uh, just feel like that. That's done. And then. Uh, don't use, just use a little hand tool for if that. I can put these things back together exactly the way I found them from the factory. So if you set this so your ball joint is pointing that way, which is eventually gonna end up in here. Um, on the left side, my nuts are pointing up. On the right side, my heads are pointing up. And what I did was I put my 330 seconds I stuck it in there, create a little gap, and then I tightened it. I did the same thing on this side, stuck my 330 second. Doesn't need to be exact, I just wanted a little gap there so it wasn't touching, and tightened it. And I just loosely tightened it so that I could still rotate it on the shaft. And what you do is you get, you get this to sit flat with the tongue, both sides. Get flat with the tongue and that's a good starting point to, to lock it in and then when you adjust your carbs later on for sinking um sinking the carbs and stuff like that and you have to loosen these to disconnect um you know just just loosen the outer two if you can not the inner two that way they'll they'll stay where they're supposed to be at um but i don't think it really matters anyways that's how i believe it should go back together and of course it's fully adjustable but i think that's going to work no grease, of course, on this. You want this to crimp down on the hard. And, um,
guess I forgot to mention the three nuts that lock these heads in. One, two, three. They are round on one side, flat on the other. And I had to take uh, this piece apart. Um, you want to make sure the round part is on the thread side and the flat part is on the head side here. I don't think it makes much of a difference, but I was using a caliper and anyways, I would, I would put the rounded edge um, on the thread side. Um, no big deal. Um, these collar pins are super, super small that holds these heads on. I couldn't find any, so I'm just going to reuse these for right now and um, I will transplant them out at a later time. I'll start the ball joint process. I just uh, used a Q-tip and um, shoved my synthetic grease up to the top there. And then the, um, the first thing that's gonna go in is the spring. That's gonna go in, go in there. And then the little cup, you wanna make sure the indent portion is facing up and out. This little recess portion is going to sit in the spring, hopefully. And then, um, there we go. And then uh, you're going to push this down with your third hand and get it set. It's okay if grease squeezes out, no big deal. I want to get it on the top there anyways. And then you can also start threading this on if you want to. So, I forgot I had a phone holder, but uh, I just have that loosely on top. And um, grease, put a little grease on the ball joint. Put that in there. Now you can start tightening that down. I'm not exactly sure how tight to make it, but I'm going to make it so that the taper is at the top. It's going to be right about there. We should be able to get, well, you do have to turn it a little bit to line up, to line up with one of the holes. Just like on a wheel bearing. There we go. Feels good. So tight. Yep, spring action's working. Obviously just bend uh and this tab down, which you can do with your you can do with your fingers. It's so thin. Mm -hmm. All right. That went well. Next up is we're going to do that again. So we're going to do it for this one here on the right. It's going to go into here. You can see why I had you set it up at 90 degrees. It's just like that. And we're going to do that. Pack this full of grease and do the same thing again. Way too much grease.
forget to put your second uh, safety cotter pin in. That's how mine came off originally, left to right there. All right, getting there. Now we're gonna turn this thing around. So it's like this. And get your long rod out, control rod. That's gonna go in here. Same thing, stuff that full of grease. I can tell you the cotter pin from the factory on this one, um, the head, the round part, is perfectly right in the middle up on the top. Kind of, you see kind of like that. It's on. Last step for me is simply put that down here. That slides in there. Yeah. that's it it's ready to go back on the car so I'll tell you one area that has room for improvement it's this connection right here I don't like so if I make it any tighter it just it's too tight it sticks but when I move move it I don't know if you can see but it's it's like jogging around in the hole a little bit Just uh, don't like that connection there and how this is set up. It's just not ideal, but I mean, it's gonna function, but it's gonna create a little bit of sloppiness there, I think. Follow the directions in the factory manual, 19.20.07, and reinstall, check that gap I told you about, and, um, and then tune and adjust your carburetors. And um, it's pretty good to go. Once this thing is um, in reinstalled back on the car, and you have this hooked up, and these bolts in and this is on your carburetor you then make sure that the adjustments are working and that this is resting with this against the stop okay and then once that's resting against the stop you insert your drill shank and then um, and then you tighten these two outer ones onto your carburetor and then you can do your car uh, that should be a final. Of course, you gotta adjust your uh, tune your carbs too first. All right.